Here I am, watching the moon rise over the Bay of Bengal on the coast of Orisha. Thinking about India's recent mission to the moon, it's amazing how the Indian Space Research Organization, or ISRO, has managed to whip up public excitement to this level, especially among the students. Recently, two other remarkable discoveries were made in the United States of America with international collaboration on a huge scale. The detection of gravitational waves predicted by Einstein nearly a hundred years ago by LIGO in which several Indian scientists participated and the first ever capture of the image of a black hole taken by the Event Horizon Telescope. How have human beings managed to do all this? Well, there's a very, very long history behind it. Stretching back to thousands of years. Ancient man was the first animal who could stand on his own legs and walk upright. He looked up and stared at the vast sky above and his material surroundings with awesome wonder. Being endowed with a wonderful intelligence, he became conscious not only of the volume, but the value of existence. Talking of consciousness and value of life, I am reminded of a famous painting, a masterpiece by the 19th century French painter Paul Gauguin. A study of the Tahitian people titled Where do we come from? What are we doing? Where are we going? Just like the natives of Tahiti, all men must have asked the same questions, beginning their inner journey towards knowledge and wisdom and expansion of their selves to engulf the entire universe. In this saga, I'll take you through their long journey, their cosmic quest over thousands and thousands of years to explore how they found out, how and when this universe came into existence, how it evolved to its present state, how it operates now, and what might happen to it in the future. Let us embark on an amazing voyage.
join me on a cosmic quest. Leaving our home planet behind to discover all the wonders in the universe. Encounter humongous horrors and dark forces to get a feeling for where we belong. Return to our sun. Our sun is a medium sized star among a hundred billion stars that make up the Milky Way galaxy, which stretches across 150 to 200,000 light years. some six billion stars in the Milky Way with planetary systems like ours. And there are thousands of billions of such galaxies in the universe. is how big the universe is. It is gigantic. And it is getting bigger and bigger. So, if you extrapolate backwards in time, you would see it get smaller and smaller till everything literally all the thousand billion galaxies with all their hundred billion stars fits into something extraordinarily small much much smaller than even an atomic nucleus with infinite density and temperature. A condition in which the known laws of physics break down. Then, how can we know it? Maybe even he does not know. However, scientists believe that in the beginning there was only space and time curled up in a minuscule form, expanding at furious space by a factor of 10 to the power 27 in a zillionth of a second, resulting in no matter, no energy. 
just cold emptiness. The very first epoch of the universe, the inflationary phase. Then something happened. That inflationary phase came to an end, converting the energy stored in space into an opaque hot inferno of electrically charged primordial matter interacting with radiation and expanding the Big Bang. As the universe expanded, it cooled. The cooling continued. Nuclei formed and eventually it was cool enough for neutral atoms to form some 380,000 years later. Then suddenly, the universe became transparent, releasing a huge amount of hot radiation, which still remains as the oldest light in the universe, a fossil of the Big Bang. It's called the Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation, or CMBR. It fills every square inch of the sky. After tens of millions of years, these atoms clumped together due to gravitational attraction, forming the first stars. On larger scales, stars began to cluster. Galaxies formed to produce the large-scale structure we see today. Occasionally, extraordinarily bright supernova explosions occurred, outshining entire galaxies, and then faded away over weeks or months, enriching the surrounding interstellar medium with heavy elements. Generations of burned out and recycled stellar material give rise to new generations of stars. These later generations contain one to two percent heavy elements, some of which form rocky planets. Some of these planets, exoplanets, rich with life's fundamental ingredients, formed in the habitable zones of their stars. Our solar system started to form about 9.1 billion years after the Big Bang. In a stellar nursery of vast amounts of hydrogen, helium and dust. A star quickly burned up its nuclear fuel and destroyed itself in a colossal explosion. A supernova. The explosion caused the gas clouds to collapse into a flat, swirling disk a hundred thousand years later. At the center of the disk was born the sun. Surrounded by a huge protoplanetary disk of dust and asteroids, rubble piles of rock, metals, ice and organic molecules which collided and coalesced to form protoplanets. One such newborn protoplanet, Gaia, was a boiling ball of a rapidly spinning molten rock at a temperature of about a thousand degrees Celsius. 
toxic hellhole with no air, only carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and water vapor. Then, another new protoplanet, Theia, the size of Mars, came along with tremendous speed and collided head on with Gaia, forming the Earth and throwing out a ring of debris which formed the moon, only 14,000 miles from the Earth, and exerting a tremendous tidal effect on the rapidly spinning Earth. Millions of years passed as the Earth cooled. And then, 3.9 billion years ago, a hail of meteors started bombarding the Earth for over 20 million years, bringing in the vital ingredients of life, water and oxygen. The Earth had cooled sufficiently by then to form a thin crust on the surface of the molten rock and started spinning less rapidly as the moon receded, setting the stage for the formation of the continents. Seven hundred million years after its birth, the Earth's surface was covered by life-giving water that came from space. Then, 3.8 billion years ago, something extraordinarily special happened. The first replicating molecules appeared. 11 million years passed before blue-green algae appeared, converting sunlight into sugar and excreting oxygen as waste. Until then, there was no oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere. It took two more million years for significant amounts of oxygen to build up in the atmosphere. The first multicellular organisms evolved two billion years later. Their evolution from simpler unicellular microbes was a pivotal point in the history of biology on Earth and has drastically reshaped the ecology of the planet. And as Charles Darwin wrote, whilst this planet has gone cycling on according to the fixed law of gravity, from so simple a beginning, endless forms, most beautiful and most wonderful, have been and are being evolved. Modern humans appeared only 200,000 years ago. Recorded human history dates back to only few thousands of years, a mere speck in time. In the 13.7 billion years history of the universe, until then, the universe was a vast theater of the inert, dumb, and desolate, evolving by blind destiny.
humans, this evolution turned course. It acquired meaning and value and started to proceed on a different plane.